Hey there, it's John with Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to share a few ways to use dynamic array formulas in Excel tables. So in this example, I'm using the filter function in an Excel table, and it's returning all of these spill errors. So what I'm attempting to do here with this filter function and this formula is look up the customer ID in this table or this customer list over here, and then return the phone numbers for the customer. And in a lot of cases, there are multiple phone numbers for the same customer. As you can see here, these first two rows are for the same customer ID. So when we do that with the filter function, typically if you do this outside of an Excel table, it will return multiple results. And that's exactly what's happening here with that exact same formula, we get multiple results. But when we do that in an Excel table, we get all these spill errors because the table is copying the formula down to every single row in the table, and then the formula below is blocking the spill. So that's why we get the pound spill error. So in cases where there's only one value returned, you will get that value returned, but any time that there's multiple values returned, we're going to get this pound spill error. So there's a few workarounds for this, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at those workarounds. So the first solution is to use the text join function to combine the values. So in this first cell here, where I have my filter formula, we're going to add text join. So we'll just start typing text join. And again, text join is gonna join or concatenate a list or range of values. So we'll tab into that. The first argument for text join is the delimiter. This is the character or characters that we want to separate the values by. So in this case here, typically you'll use something like a comma. So we'll just type a comma and a space after that and then uh, wrap that in quotation marks. Next uh, argument is ignore empty. We'll set this to uh, true, so that'll ignore any empty values. And then finally, the uh, last or third argument is the text, and that's the array that the filter function is returning, the multiple values. So that's really all we need here for text join. We'll close the parentheses on that and hit enter. And as you can see, now it's joining all of the multiple values together here into one string and returning those values into the table. If you don't like the comma separator, uh, sometimes it can get a little bit hard to see. Another common one you can use is the pipe symbol here. So I'll type a space, then the pipe symbol, and then a space after that, hit enter. And that just makes it a little easier to see the separation between the values here, especially when your values are a lot of numbers like they are in this case. So next we'll take a look at how to split the values into their own cells with the index function. One of the drawbacks of this solution here with text join is that the values are combined into a single cell. And that works fine in this scenario, but you might have scenarios where you wanna analyze these values further with formulas or pivot tables, and that can be challenging to do if they're all combined into one single cell. So on this sheet over here, I've added three different columns for the phone numbers to our table, and we're gonna split the values out using index. So we have our same filter function right here, and we're going to add index uh, to the beginning of it. So I'm just gonna start typing index and tab into that. Now the index function, the first argument is the array, and that will be the results of the filter function, the spill range that it returns or the array that's returned. So we'll leave that as is, and then we'll go out to the end and type a comma, and our next argument is the row number. So this is the row number that we want to return from the filter's spill range. And in this case, we could just type a one right here, or to make this more dynamic, we can select a cell right here that contains a one or contains our column number. And in this case, I'm just gonna hit F4 on the keyboard two times to make my row number absolute and my column uh, letter relative so we can copy this formula to the right. So that's just gonna reference a one right there. We'll close the parentheses and hit enter. And then we'll just get the first phone number returned from the range that filter uh, returns. And now we can copy this formula to the right. So if I just hit Control C and Control V, that's gonna copy the formula to the right. It's now going to reference this two here. So it's going to give us the second row uh, from our array using index and return the result right here. And then of course we can copy that to the right as well. And then we'll get uh, any phone numbers out here that contain, or any, for any people that have three phone numbers, we'll get their phone number right here in column three. Now you see we also have some pound ref, ear, ref errors here. It's hard to say three times fast. Uh, for that, we can just use the if error function. Hard to say one time. <laughs> and then we will uh, have our value here. 
type a comma, and then for the value of error, we can just use double quotes to return a blank, close the parentheses and hit enter. That will return uh, the results. We'll copy this over again. And now we get blanks where there is no uh, phone number for either the second or third occurrence. Now, one of the drawbacks to this solution with index is that you will have to know how many columns to add to your table. That's relatively easy to figure out. And over here on the customer list, I've added this column that contains the count of phone numbers per person. And this just uses a simple count if function to count the customer ID in the customer ID column. And again, return that number of phone numbers per person. And then over here, I'm just using the max function to return the maximum number from this phone count column. So this tells us that we'll need to add three additional columns to our table to fit all of the phone numbers for each person. So these techniques will work with any dynamic array formula that returns a spill range. It's not specific to the filter function. If you have any other tips or suggestions on how to use spill ranges in Excel tables, feel free to leave a comment below. If you're new to our channel, hit the subscribe button and then head over to excelcampus.com free to grab our free Excel Pro Tips ebook. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.